Hey guys, it's Vampire Mike from Sega CD Universe, and I want to do a little mini review impressions on Pure Solar on the Xbox One. This was a digital release that came out for the uh, PS3, PS4, Xbox One, PC, uh, Xbox 360, I believe. Um, it also got a physical release on Dreamcast, which I pre ordered, but I have yet to uh, receive. It's been about a year now. Uh, the reason I had double dipped and bought it on the Xbox One is because I figured. You know, one day when these systems are offline, um, I won't have too much to worry about because I have a physical copy if I ever want to play it again. I'm not a really big fan of, of digital stuff. Um, also, my Microsoft points were expiring on June 1st, so I figured I'd uh, use them and get something I know I'd play. Uh, and I haven't really dug into an RPG in a long time. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, this game was uh, originally released on the Me Mega Drive slash Genesis. Uh, it, I believe it was the biggest megabyte cartridge ever. Uh, it was a game by Watermelon Factories, who uh, is a third-party company that made the game after the Genesis had been long dead. I think this came out in the beginning or mid, I think it's mid-2000s, uh, like 2006, 2005, something like that. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, it's in that vein. Um, it actually garnered a lot of attention because it was... Uh, really a ambitious project, and uh, people who love old-school RPGs usually like it. Um, some of them say the difficulties are really too high later on in the game, and that there's a lot of points you have to go to um, that don't lead you there. So it's nothing. there's no hand-holding in this game for the most part. So if you're in like a dungeon and you have to find something, sometimes it's like literally hidden, um, which can make the game rather difficult. I haven't gotten to any of those points yet, because admittedly I'm still sort of near the beginning of the game. Um, I haven't had a lot of time in the past few, I'll say years, <laughs> to invest a ton of time into games, so I only play in spurts, and when I do, I will kind of want something I can do with friends, so I don't see them as often as I like, you know? Um, but I was excited about this one, uh, like I said, enough so to order it twice. It was really, a lot of it um, was shed, a lot of light for this game was shed, um, by a really great YouTuber named Vice the Determined. Uh, him and his twin brother uh, do videos together. I was also a twin, so that kind of uh, hits me in the right spot as well, you know? I like that. But, oh, wait, well, let me quiet for one moment here. As you can see, you could switch between the full soundtrack and the, the you know, um, regular soundtrack, and you could switch between 16-bit HD and HD+, which is a really cool feature to do on the fly. Um, you could also add scan lines, and um, I don't think I mentioned it, but the original cartridge came with a CD you put in your Sega CD, and you could have like the full audio soundtrack as opposed to the like MIDI soundtrack, but you could switch between those on this. So anyhow, Vice the Determined, excellent YouTuber. Great, really in-depth videos, excellent speaking voice. Please check him out. I'm going to put his link down in the description. Um, he can shed a lot more on the original release of this game, and just his videos are excellent in general. Um, the other cool thing about the game was if you had a Sega 32X, you were actually able to get um, certain items, or a certain item, I should say, that you weren't able to get had you played this on your Genesis without the 32X. So they really added a lot of cool stuff uh, into this game, like a lot of fan service, I would say. Um, supposedly the difficulty really ramps up, and like I said, they, they put it so that a lot of the items, or some of the items you need to progress, are actually sort of hidden. So that kind of sucks. Um, I haven't, like I said, I haven't gotten into anything at that point. But I really like this title. I think um, if you're an old school RPG fan and you want that throwback feeling, you don't want to be handheld. You want a little bit of that difficulty of the grind. Um, I think you'll like it. I mean, it's it's got a, a charm to it. The characters have a cute personality. It's definitely reminiscent of something like Lunar, uh, Silver Star, or Eternal Blue. Um, I like that you can switch on the fly with the scan lines and the graphics and the soundtrack. I think they really tried to go out of their way to, you know, make people happy who played on, who wanted to play the original version but couldn't type of thing. You know, they could still play this version and, and down, downgrade it to the 16-bit look or whatever. Um, I liked some of the humor and the characters. I thought some of the drawings were really nice, and I liked the way they redid the backgrounds. Um, the music is really cool. Definitely has an old-school feel to it. And um, when you're fighting, I think I, I think I had mentioned this, but if I hadn't, you can just pretty much gather up your. Uh, it's like kind of like wasting a turn, but instead of wasting it or defending, you're actually gathering up like energy 
and then once you reach certain gather levels, you can you know use certain attacks or certain uh, magical skills. I'm pretty sure this was the boss of that level. It's like the beginning of the game. Here we go. I'm gathering right now. You can also transfer your gather so that uh. You know, if you have a, a one or a two, you can transfer to someone else so they can get really strong right away. And then they can use their magic if that's the kind of spell you need to use. I think uh, a lot of it is also elemental based. So some of the bad guys end up needing to get hit with certain things to really get killed. Um, so people were kind of complaining that you had to know which like thing to use type of thing. If you aren't into these slow-paced, turn-based RPGs, you will not like this. Um, it's not going to change your mind, it's not going to make you some kind of believer. It's really just for, I would say, the people who do love classic RPGs, who were raised on Lunar and Chrono Trigger and Earthbound, things of that nature, you know. You're this uh, young kid, Hostin, I believe it is, or Hostin, uh, with your group of friends looking to find this plant to help save your dad's life because he's sick. I think in the end it becomes like a whole save the world type of story. I'm not sure how um, grand the story gets, but supposedly it gets you know fairly big, so to speak. And uh, it was made by Watermelon Games. Watermelon Games does a lot of cool. Um, they're working on a few other titles right now. Uh, one is on the Super Nintendo, I believe. One is a beat 'em up on the Genesis, which looks excellent. And they just published, not not um, not released themselves, you know, not like created, but. They published uh, a visual novel, um, like Choose Your Own Adventure, called Sacred Line Genesis. Uh, Gunstar Heroes uh, on YouTube had did a great video on that game. Uh, they're also publishing uh, my friends over at, um, <coughs> excuse me, the Elysian Shadows team. Um, they are uh, they're publishing their title as well, which is a very very ambitious like action RPG, uh, old school looking on the Dreamcast. And um, I believe other, you know, other consoles as well. So keep an eye out for Elysian Shadows too. But uh, just a really cool throwback game if you like old school RPGs. And um, I'm gonna keep quiet here to let uh, to let you watch the little end here. And thanks guys for watching. It's Vampire Mike from Sega CD Universe. Be good. <laughs>